Uh, good afternoon. My name is Jean Dark with the Texas Department of Public Safety, the public information officer for the East Texas area. Uh, behind me is a, the group from the community that will uh, speak and give the information. If you have questions afterwards, uh, they will be uh, available. I'm Don Kirkpatrick, Van Zandt County Judge. As you know, Van was hit hard last night by a tornado. Uh, there's a lot of destruction. I personally want to thank all the agencies that have come together. Uh, it's, everything is working smoothly. They're all working together, coordinating well with each other. Uh, everything's on schedule, going as planned. <clears throat> I want to thank the public for all the outpouring of support, uh, for your support, your prayers. I would ask that if you have any items to donate, if the public has anything they would like to donate, that they would uh, bring the water and non-perishable items uh, will be collected at the Van Zandt County Community Center at 310 Chestnut Street. If you have clothes or blankets that you would like to donate, uh, they're being accepted at the Assembly God Church at 409 North Maple Street. Uh, we're working very hard to get to get Van back to normal. Uh, please be patient with us. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Uh, Van is a strong city, strong community. We will rebuild. Uh, I would ask that you continue to pray for all the lives that were affected in this disaster. Uh, continue to pray for the families and everyone and for the city of Van. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Chuck Allen, the County Fire Marshal Emergency Management Coordinator. Just kind of recap the events that transpired. Yesterday at approximately 8.45 p.m., the city of Van and the east side of Van Zandt County was struck by what appears to be a, a uh, tornado. Approximately 30% of the city of Van has suffered damages, ranging from completely destroyed homes to down trees and power lines. The initial response of emergency responders was to locate and identify any injured people as a result and to transport these victims to the hospital as rapidly as possible. We have transported approximately 43 people to area hospitals, 24 went to Trinity Mother Francis and Tyler, and 7 went to ETMC Tyler, with many more transported by private vehicles. The Red Cross established a shelter here at the First Baptist Church in Van, and as of this morning, 50 people had registered uh, here at the shelter. News since our uh, 6 o'clock press conference this morning, at this time, we can confirm we've had two fatalities as a result of this storm that has affected the city of Van and Van Zandt County. Power outages range anywhere from east of Highway 110, north of FM 1995, all the way up into the Sand Flat area. Encore and Atmos Energy are working to restore the, this power and restore gas to these areas that have been affected. Rating bridge crews from the city of Van into Van Zandt County are working diligently to get these roads opened up and allow access back for emergency responders to do another search to identify anybody that may not be accounted for. Since our briefing this morning, eight people uh, are still unaccounted for. We did locate two people uh, who were fine and were residing in uh, Lindell at the time. Just bear with us, we do have multiple emergency responders from across the region, across the state of Texas coming in to assist with this disaster. The National Weather Service just arrived on scene and will be doing a damage assessment survey here just shortly and we'll have that information of what, uh, how powerful the tornado struck the city of Van at our 3 o'clock briefing. Now I'll introduce Mayor Dean Stone, the city of Van. Thank you. Thank you all very much. It's, uh, it's a terrible thing for a city to come out like we did, but it's a great thing the way the people responded. We were here last night when it hit. We were here all night and we're still here and a bunch of them still are. We lost a lot of good properties, uh, but it's, a, it's just something that you never expect, but we'll be working on it diligently. Uh, these gentlemen have already told you some of the things that's gonna come to pass, but we just have to stick together and, and do what we've been doing so far. And uh, there's no place else I'd rather be 
at this time than right here where everybody sticks together and does their job. And we do appreciate it. And so thank you very much for your time. And now I'm going to thank Dr. Mr. Dunn. Don Dunn, Superintendent at Van ISD. Um, last night's storms uh, created some significant damage to our uh, elementary campuses, J.E. Rhodes Elementary School and Van Intermediate School uh, took on some significant damage as well as the Van ISD Administration Building and our bus barn. Um, as of right now we have four weeks of school. Uh, we are in the process of making plans to um, uh, reorganize our campuses and to uh, consolidate those two campuses into the remaining three. Um, we will obviously uh, have to communicate through Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Uh, but the great thing is uh, the damages to Van ISD are all brick and mortar. Um, every bit of that can be replaced. We're just very blessed. We feel very blessed that um, this did not happen during a school day and that I'm not standing up here right now uh, talking to you about any kids. And so um, just ask that you would continue to uh, send your thoughts and your prayers to the community of Van uh, and the great people of this, this little town. Thank you. The two schools that were affected are J.E. Rhodes Elementary School and Van Intermediate School. Van ISD Administration Building and the Van ISD Bus Barn were damaged. There was no damage to um, the Van Middle School, Van Junior High School, or Van High School. And the intermediate school, second and third grade? Yes, sir. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions for our uh, officials? Can I? Chuck, uh, can you tell us where the fatalities uh, occurred, what part of the city? The fatalities were on South Bodog Street uh, near the mobile home park. Can can you the genders of those people, it was a male and a female. Can you tell us what path the storm took, like how long it was on the ground and how wide the destruction Until we can get some aerial uh, recon up in the air so we can look down at, at the exact path of the storm, it does appear that it traveled from a southwest to northeast uh, trajectory through the community. Uh, as for how long it was on the ground or exactly where it was on the ground at, we won't know that until we can we can get up and see things from the air. Did the sirens go off and how did people react in town? One at a time. What is the early estimate? Do you know the damage to We're we're easily looking at fifty to hundred homes here in the city that have been damaged or, or destroyed. Did the sirens go off and how did people react when they hear them? I do believe the sirens did go off uh, once a warning was issued by the National Weather Service. However, this storm spun up real fast and the warning time was extremely limited. At this time, we do have multiple fire departments, law enforcement agencies, Texas Parks and Wildlife game wards with search canines going door to door in the neighborhoods that have been affected to see if they can identify any of the missing people uh, that we have names for. Fatalities related to each other? Uh, yes, they were. Are they adults? Husband they were adults. In the they were in an area just south of the mobile home park. Is husband and wife? That is correct. In a home? Yes. And was it the home that crashed, fell on them or did they I, I do not know any details at this time of the of the extent of okay. where they were at. Does that make it worse for people It makes it extremely difficult for people to see, but the main thing is is heed the warning of the National Weather Service, local newsroom and radio. When the warning's issued, you have to seek shelter immediately. No, sir, I, I live on the other side of the county. There, there are people missing from the south side, and there's also some people missing from the north side. Chuck, do you know how many people have actually uh, gone into the shelter at this point? Do you have any number of uh, the homeless? As of, I do not have a total number of homeless. I do know 50 people uh, sought registered in at the, at the uh, shelter last night, early this morning. You know, there, there are stories that get started in the first. There's one story about some people who were picked up and flung an entire block and then walked away. Is that just made up or do you have a 
I, I have none of those stories have been been brought to us. Until the National Weather Service can get out and do their damage assessment, we won't know if the damage was a result of one tornado or two. Keep in mind that we did, while we were beginning our emergency response, we did go under another tornado warning. Uh, at that time, we did have to pull emergency responders off the streets to seek shelter uh, in the event that we were told that there was another tornado inbound. But we suffered no damage as a result of that second tornado warning. Do what, sir? It's, it's making it extremely difficult on the emergency responders to get access. Uh, the guys that we're sending in are, are, are trained in search and rescue. Uh, it's not just some of your regular volunteer fire department uh, personnel that uh, don't have the expertise uh, in search and rescue. Uh, we have paired them up with guys that, that know what they're doing and, and uh, we feel effective and, and efficient that those guys will get in there and do the job and, and identify anybody that may still be missing that we can't account for. I do not know if anybody's wearing a GoPro or not. When is the last time a storm of this magnitude struck the town of uh, In talking to the fire chief who's been here for over 30 years, he, he cannot ever recall uh, a uh, tornado of this magnitude or any type of storm striking this part of the county. Did y'all hear that? 1943 and F5 hit the city of Van. Once we realized the magnitude of, this, of the disaster we were dealing with, uh, we activated our county emergency management plan. Uh, that plan enables us to start reaching out to other responders across the, the region and the state of Texas. Uh, we do have other state assets that are inbound to us to uh, help us facilitate this uh, response and recovery phases of this, of this disaster. I will tell you that where I was positioned at in the county when these storms were rolling through, I was monitoring the National Weather Service chat room. As soon as they identified rotation that constituted needing a, a tornado warning issued, that warning was issued, the sirens were sounded, and it was a matter of minutes before we had, a, had devastation amongst us. Any other questions? I will tell you the cell tower for AT&T went down uh, during the storm and it limited our emergency responder capabilities of communicating outside. Uh, was extremely difficult until this morning when it came back up. Say that again, sir. How valuable was that warning? Do you think that saved lives that time? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, uh, you know, we were able to get that information disseminated, the sirens sounded, you know. And keep in mind, a lot of times when, when people hear the outdoor warning sirens go off, their first instinct is to run outside and see what happened. And uh, as to whether that was the case or not last night, uh, as a result of the ones that uh, uh, lives were lost, I don't know. I encourage people when they hear those the sirens go off or the warning is issued, you have to seek shelter immediately uh, to save your life and your family's life. Yes, sir, there is. We do have code red and we do have the automatic weather warning, which uh, we bought and paid for out of uh, funds so we can alert the, the citizens of this community as soon as that weather polygon is, is issued by the National Weather Service. Those people that have signed up and are registered automatically get that phone call at the same time. I could not tell you right now who all was here helping assist. Uh, right now, we're just trying to get our hand around things and, and make sure that all our injured, our missing people are accounted for, which is the priority for this this response at this time. Will you be able to get back in there today? I do believe that we are working on a, trying to get a pool camera to go into some of the areas that have been affected 
to uh, to get some video for y'all to to decipher back out to the to the public. The couple that was killed live in the south side. That's correct. No, no, no first responders have been injured as a result of the, of the storm. Did you say your next briefing will be at 3 o'clock? will be at 3 o'clock this afternoon, right here at the exact same place. Anything else? Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. 3 o'clock.